Number 11 from the 2013 Advanced Higher Maths An implicit equation And you have to find the first and second derivative Or rather just the values of the first and second derivative at this point So that would seem to imply that you don't need to specifically Find the first derivative in its formula form Or the second derivative in its formula form Simply evaluate it so there's different ways you might go about it. The first step, obviously, is I'll have to differentiate this. So I'm going to differentiate the four terms, term by term. Well, that first term is straightforward. That'll just be 2x. This is a product of x and a function of x. So I've got a product there. So the x part would be 4. And the y part would be dy by dx. That's that product taken care of. That's a function of a function. Square of something would be 2 times the thing. Then inside times the derivative of the thing, dy by dx, the constant disappears. So I've got this. There's two ways I could proceed. I could either tidy this up to write dy by dx equals, or I could just pop in those values and find dy by dx. I think I'll just pop in the values and see how messy it gets. So if I take the values negative 2, 3 and put them through this, I'll have 2x, that'll be negative 4. 4y, that'll be 12. 4x, that'll be negative 8, so I've got negative 8 divided by dx. 2y, that'll be plus 6 divided by dx, should equal 0. So adding that lot up, I've got negative 2 divided by dx. This part comes to 8. Taking that over, that will be a negative 8. So I've got divided by dx equals 4. Now, since that worked fairly painlessly, maybe I'll just take this expression here in this spread out form and just differentiate it again. So let's see, if I start with number 1 and I differentiate it, so I'll just say 1 dashed to borrow that notation, and just go through these four terms differentiating them, what would I have? Well, 2x would become 2, 4y would become 4dy by dx. Now I've got a product, that product would be 4 for the 4x part, leave the dy by dx alone. And then for the second part of the product, leave the 4x, and that'll turn into the second derivative. Same again with this one. The first part would be 2 dy by dx, leave the dy by dx alone. And then the second part would be leave the 2y and do the second derivative. And that should equal 0. I know it looks a little bit messy, but I've got numbers for most of these. So again, I'll pop in the values negative 2, 3, and also dy by dx equals 4, and see what it all comes to. So I've got 2 plus 4 times, and dy by dx was 4, plus 4 times, and dy by dx was 4, plus 4x, that's a negative 8, I don't know what dy the second derivative is yet, plus 2 times, and that's a 4 times a 4. I know I could have put those numbers in. Plus 2y, that's 6. For it all to come to 0. So it's not actually that much worse than this first one. So adding that up, again, I've got negative 2. I've got negative 2 dy by dx squared. And that looks like I've got a 16, a 16, and a 16 here. So how many have I got altogether? I've got 1, 2, 3, 4 16s are 64, and another 2 would be 66. So that would be negative 66, which finally gives me the second derivative equals 33. Now, let's just compare it to actually going through it formally tidying everything up as you go. Well, if I was to go through this formula, I would have 4x plus 2y, lots of dy by dx, would equal taking that across, now that's a 2x and a 4y, but they're both negative, so I think I'll leave that out of it. Negative 2x plus 4y, so I would have dy by dx is negative of 2x plus 4y over 4x plus 2y which would then cancel down to negative x plus 2y over 2x plus y. <clears throat> then, putting in the numbers negative 2, 3, I would have dy by dx whoops, equals negative of negative 2 plus 6 over negative 4, doubling it, plus 3, that's 4 over negative 1, which is negative 4. The negative of negative 4 is, of course, as before, 
divide by dx equals 4. That's making it all nice and tidy. Notice it was significantly longer though. Then for the second part, <clears throat> I would just differentiate this expression. So if I've got dy by dx explicitly stated, so I've got the negative again of, so that would be the square of the denominator, because I'm going to be using the quotient rule, then differentiate the top. So differentiating the top will give me a 1 plus 2 dy by dx, leaving the denominator alone, 2x plus y, minus... Now leave the numerator alone, x plus 2y, times, now differentiate the denominator. And that's just going to be 2 plus dy by dx. Now I'm not going to tidy this up by substituting that expression in for dy by dx and then resolving the fraction and so on, because I only want the value of this at this point here. So, Wimping out a bit, not actually taking this all the way down to a final neat expression, I would have just substituting these. So I've got the negative of 1 plus 2 times divide by dx, that'll be 8. 2 times x, that's a negative 4, plus y, which is 3, minus x, that's a negative 2. 2y, that'll be a 6, times 2 plus, and that's a 4, all over. 2 times negative 2, that's negative 4, plus y, that's a 3 squared. So I've just got this wee bit of arithmetic left here now. That's a 9 times a negative 1, so that's a negative 9. That's a 6 times a 4, so that's 24, but it's minus 24. And that's a negative 1 squared, which is just a positive 1. So I've got the negative of negative 9 and 24 is 33 over 1. I don't know why I did just write negative 33. It doesn't matter because my final answer is going to be as before dy, the second derivative, d squared y by dx squared is going to be 33. So that first method then of leaving the big untidied up strand was actually far quicker and didn't look much messier than this bundle here.